Hello, this is Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this lesson, we'll be looking at ways of using the gibbs duhem equation for intermediate thermodynamics. Again, our goal will be that you can begin seeing ways that you can use this very important equation. What we had developed last time is a general form of the gibbs duhem equation, which is at the top, where M represents any property like internal energy, enthalpy, Gibbs energy, Helmholtz energy, entropy, or something like volume. But things that are going to change as our conditions change. So as we change usually temperature, pressure, and mole fractions of my species. And what we find is that this property for the mixture will change with temperature dt and with pressure dp. That combination will be identically equal to the mole fraction times the change in partial molar quantity m for each species. If I'm fixing the temperature and pressure, then I can say that the combination of mole fractions times change in partial molar quantities will be zero for the sum of all components. And this is the general form of the gibbs duhem equation. Now, of course, it's easier to look at when we actually have a definition for M. So let's look at this, for instance, for G. If I put in G, the specific Gibbs energy, dt, times the change in T, plus dg dp times the change in P, will equal the sum for all components of xi d partial molar Gibbs energy for each species. Or, fixing the temperature and pressure, I end up with this expression. I could look at this for volume. So dv dt at constant pressure, dt, plus dv dp at constant temperature, dp, is going to be the sum of the mole fractions times the partial molar volumes for each species. And at constant pressure and temperature, the mole fractions times the change in partial molar volumes for each species will add up to be zero. Now if I wanted to further look at this for a very specific binary mixture, let's just say two components, then what I end up with is that this becomes x1 dv1, partial molar volume 1, plus x2 dv, and that ought to say 2 right there. But I also could rewrite this instead of as a differential form. I could write it as a derivative form. So that's what we did below. I could take the derivative of each of these with respect to maybe x1. And this would be the gibbs duhem equations for the general condition or fixed temperature and pressure. So let's just take that last expression there. If I use that one, I have that x1 dv1 dx1 is equal to negative x2 dv2 dx1. But of course, x1 plus x2 equals 1, so I could eliminate the x2 from the expression and get x1 minus 1 over x1 times dv2 dx1 will be dv1 dx1. So I have a relationship between how the partial molar volume for species 1 relates to the partial molar volume of species 2. And among other things I see there is I can look at this and see that, oh, these slopes are going to have opposite sign. I also can look at this and recognize that as x1 or x2 goes to 1, as 1 goes to 1, the other goes to 0. Make sure you work that out in your head, OK? But what's going to happen is I'm going to go to fixed values. So I'm going to end up with horizontal asymptotes as I approach the quantity 1. Another thing we can do is 
let's just say I have an expression for this specific volume of my mixture. So it's, again, for a binary because that's enough to wrap our heads around right now. For the volume of something where I have x1 and x2, it really is just a function of x1, right? Because x2 is 1 minus x1. And so the volume of my mixture is going to be x1 partial molar volume for 1 plus x2 partial molar volume for 2. If I were to differentiate this, I'm going to get just using product rule on each piece there, x1 dv1 plus dx1 v1, x2 dv2 plus v2 dx2. But the Gibbs-Duhem equation, if I'm fixing temperature and pressure, is going to eliminate this first and third term. These add up to zero. And so I'm left with just these other pieces here. Now, here's one more little fact that you know, x1 plus x2 equals 1. So if I took the differential of this, I find that dx1 plus dx2 equals 0, or dx1 equals negative dx2. And so now then, if I use this with this expression up here, okay, what I can find is that the partial molar volume of 1 for species 1 is going to be the volume of the mixture plus x2, or 1 minus x1 if you prefer, times how this volume of the mixture changes as I change x1. And for species 2, I can write it as the uh, volume of the mixture minus x1 minus x1 times how the volume changes with x1. And so this gives me a way of evaluating partial molar quantities. Here's one more thing that we can do. I could look at any of these, but let's look at G again. G is always a nice choice because at constant temperature and pressure, the fundamental relation is so simple. This here is the fundamental relation for G. So dG is SDT minus VDP plus the sum of the mu's dN. If I compare this to using partial derivatives, so how G changes with T, holding P and all the n's constant, is going to be S. And how G changes with P, holding T and all the n's constant, is negative V. And how G changes with the number of moles n sub i, holding T and P and all the other n's constant, is going to be the chemical potential. But that also is how we have defined partial molar Gibbs energy. So therefore, what we end up with is that chemical potential is partial molar Gibbs energy. And we'll be using that quite a bit later. But what this does is it means that the Gibbs-Duhem equation says that 0, if I fix the temperature and pressure, is the sum of the mole fractions times the changes in the chemical potentials for all my components. And this becomes what is called a thermodynamic consistency test for mixtures. Now we'll be looking at this or variations on this expression in future lessons. But we need to first come in and define ways of evaluating chemical potential. And as chemical engineers, we're going to use fugacity and activity coefficients. And this expression here will become a key piece to how we evaluate different formulations for fugacity or activity coefficients from substances that are going to be in a mixture so that we can evaluate whether or not the thermodynamics is correct. So thank you for your attention. I will see you in a future lesson.